Hi, this is Matthew Robert Payne, and this is a, going to be a prophetic destiny blueprint. And what that is, is um, it's like an extensive half an hour uh, look at some of the things that a person is called to do uh, with their life. Um, often you may have ideas. Uh, these can be very helpful to uh, share God's heart and some of the things he wants you to do. And uh, Callum has ordered one from my website and you can go to the description tag and go to my website and order one for yourself. They're $150 Australian for my time and uh, it's certainly worth the time and certainly worth uh, the money to find out what you're destined to do with your life. Um, as I was uh, catching the bus home, uh, uh, Callum, uh, I was getting like downloads from the Lord to start this with like, just like a word of prophecy over you, calling out some giftings, some characteristics in you that are really useful. Um, so the Lord says you have the gift of mercy. Uh, you have the gift of, uh, I don't understand mercy too much. You can look it up yourself. You have the gift of hospitality. Uh, you're the person who makes someone new at church feel welcome. Uh, you uh, have no problems entertaining. Uh, you're friendly. You make people fit in. Um, it makes you uncomfortable to know that there's strangers in church and they haven't met anyone. Uh, you're sort of the person who introduces a person to the church and takes the person around and uh, helps them uh, meet people. You like connecting people. You've got a strong uh, bent uh, for compassion. You're really uh, in touch uh, with the heart of Jesus in that. Uh, you um, really, your motivation for nearly everything you do is compassion and agape love. And uh, you're really not so much into money and the things of the world and resources and possessions and great things. Um, the only reason you feel motivated to earn a lot of money is so that you could sow and use that as a kingdom tool uh, to uh, sow back into the kingdom. And, uh, and so um, in that respect, I really thank you for your finance. Um, I was needing it today and it really uh, it gave me a lift. Um, you've got a gift of encouragement. Uh, you just naturally lift people's spirits up. You naturally come alongside people and encourage them. You see the good in people. You see the good people are doing. Uh, you, you like to only see the good in people. Uh, you don't focus on the negative aspects. You don't focus on issues that they have. Uh, you you uh, like to encourage people. You've got a very strong uh, teaching gift. Uh, you may not know that. I bought a new apple cider today. It's called Crushed. And... Uh, The grapes are crushed and they make wine and olives are crushed and they make olive oil. And um, good teaching comes from a crushing. Good, good teaching comes from life experience and the anointing oil that flows from uh, hardship and pain and suffering and trials. And um, I feel that um, your main motivation to teach 
is your compassion and your agape love and uh, you're like this servant that wants to serve all, like the Apostle Paul. Um, make yourself a servant of all. And uh, so yeah, another really strong gift in you is uh, your possession, your ability to love of agape love, with the love of Jesus. You have this uh, tremendous capacity uh, to love. And, you know, my capacity to love came from intimacy. My capacity to love came from Jesus first loving me. And um, it's this love that you have for people that would have you put in so much work to train people, to equip people, to raise people up, uh, to father people. Uh, to be a servant to people, to give to ministries. It's this love that everything flows out of. You've got a, like a fathering, um, mentoring gift, um, and you flow really well at that. You're good at making disciples. You're good at training and equipping and mentoring people. You've got a gift of being a bond slave, being a servant to all. And uh, it's really handy and uh, really applicable to uh, the proper Christian life. And uh, you understand this, being a servant to all. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. You understand what Jesus was getting there, getting at there. And... Um, You've also got a great gift of giving. Um, you enjoy giving to God's people. You enjoy giving to the poor. Um, sometimes I enjoy paying my bills. I'm just a little bit crazy. Um, so these are sort of the undergirded gifts that'll undergird some of these uh, functions, some of these things that I believe God wants you to do. So number one, I see you as a kingdom giver and a supporter in a major way. So I see you uh, being used. I see you, I see your life being used to be a source of funding for Christian ministries, for a be a source of funding for individual Christians who are in ministry. Um, one of the best ways to give uh, to the Lord is to give to your own ministry and, uh, and uh, sow back into your own ministry. But uh, a really uh, important man in my life taught me to give uh, and fund other ministries and have an outward focus in my ministry besides giving to my ministry to give to other people. So I can see uh, God raising finances up for you so that uh, you can be a kingdom giver and a, a really helpful and needed supporter of ministries. That's where I add, add me to your ministry list that you so to. <laughs> Oh, uh, yes, I bless you a hundredfold. Oh, uh, yes, it's all coming back. This is good soil. <laughs> yes, I'm playing with it. I'm messing with myself, having a joke with myself. Um, point number two, I can see you as a teacher, uh, someone who uses exhortation, uh, building up, strengthening people. Um, so they're sort of the reasons that uh, you do exhortation or encouraging. You build people up and you strengthen people uh, in their faith. And this is some of the key motivations as to why you'll be used in teaching in a powerful way. And um, I can see you 
teaching in every dimension that you're open to. Uh, I can see you uh, doing YouTube videos. I can see you writing books. I can see you doing webinars. I can see you doing masterclasses. And I can also see you uh, doing class curriculums and sets for churches to run through and small groups to run through. Um, see, whatever you can imagine, whatever you conceive, whatever you can believe in, you can do. And uh, um, some of the giving, like YouTube and Facebook, some of the teaching, like YouTube and Facebook, will be f free. Uh, you could possibly do some of your webinars for free. But some of them will be monetized sort of teaching uh, streams of income that will bring an income in for you. Um, so uh, I would uh, encourage you to step out and start to teach. You can start to teach just by learning how to upload a YouTube video and start a YouTube channel. Uh, and I can tell you one of the best ways to learn and plunge the depths of scripture is to start to teach it. You, you, as you hear yourself speak, you hear new things from the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will teach you in the midst of teaching. So uh, I feel that uh, God is raising up a really um, important, cutting edge, prophetic sort of teacher in you. Number three, uh, I see as a collector of stories. Um, so um, I haven't seen this before, but it's a good thing that I haven't seen it before. I can see you. Uh, making like omnibus books, uh, books of collections of multiple writers who uh, you collect the stories of and, uh, and put together in an anthology or whatever it's called, uh, or an omnibus of uh, people writing about around stories, testimonies. Uh, about a certain subject. So some of the subjects may be faith, uh, healing, supernatural, giving, great testimonies, great salvation testimonies. Um, the supernatural can have supernatural testimonies. The giving uh, testimonies can have people giving and how the Lord supplied their giving and blessed them and honoured them and um, I can see you um, teaching on the subjects in a, in a first chapter uh, and then in the second chapter having stories that illustrate that teaching that you brought in the first chapter. Then I can see you in the third chapter teaching something at another level, at the second sort of level on the subject and then chapter four having testimonies at that second level uh, reinforcing that point reinforcing that story reinforcing what you're saying in your second point that if you do this then you can do this and uh, you have testimonies of people who were at this level and then did this and reached a further level and uh, that would be helpful. Um, what I found, that I, I know two Christian authors who've made uh, quite a bit of money and uh, both retired themselves on the incomes from their books. I was never that successful. Um, all my books are 99 cents and, uh, and I just want to get books out there. And honestly, my books would be free uh, if Amazon allowed them to be free all the time. I know when I make my book free for a day, there's more copies downloaded in that day than a whole month at 99 cents. So free is very popular. So um, I can see you having these teachings um, 
and producing these uh, books. Um, and uh, you can brand the books like An Idiot's Guide to Faith, An Idiot's Guide to Healing. You know, um, we have that in America, An Idiot's Guide. The Dummies a Guide to Such and Such or whatever. Um, they're branded books that the whole series, the subjects are different, but it's the same format. And uh, I can see that for you um, in your um, in your teaching chapter. You can include a couple of stories from your own, but you'll be mainly leaving the next chapter for other people's stories. So in the other people's stories part, you can have your own testimonies in there too. You build a lot of credibility and likability in your readers uh, for hearing from you. Number four, um, modeling how to serve others, teaching how to serve faithfully and allow your gift to make room for you. So um, I, I can see you like doing something to model servanthood, to, to model faithful service to model loyalty and good hard work and faithfulness and, um, and excellence. And uh, I see you uh, teaching it, but modeling this in some way in probably one of your businesses on how to serve others in an effective way. So there's so many people who join ministries to serve the ministry. I can see you teaching people how to serve effectively, how to have the right mind with a balance of serving God through that ministry and uh, making that ministry your own, uh, being uh, treating the ministry as your own partnership, as your own ministry, uh, and modelling that to people through life teaching, through mentoring uh, through different sort of uh, different outlets and different methods. I can see you uh, modeling good servanthood, a good way to uh, serve. So turning the page. Number five, I can see an online school like School on the subjects of the books that you're writing uh, on multiple subjects. And I can see you teaching kingdom principles and faith and uh, all sorts of uh, courses, but I think um, all modules in, in, in the one course. It doesn't have to be accredited, although you can chase up accreditation. Um, but I can see you sourcing really good teachers from all around the world and they don't have to be recognized teachers they don't have to be uh, world leaders they don't have to be the bill johnsons and sean boltzers and um and whoever you respect in uh joseph princes and um joyce myers and jim bakers and jeremiah johnsons they don't have to be the big name preachers. They can be little guys with great giftings and great abilities and great anointings and great leading and teaching from the Holy Spirit, anointing and power and covering. Um, I can see you having like international students and international teachers from all around the world. I can see you monetizing the course charging a certain amount for the course and uh, and uh, paying the teachers like a, a stripend or, or an allowance according to how many students. So the course may be, you know, $1,500 for six months uh, for a course, which is pretty cheap. Uh, you can go to a, like a conference in Sydney for four days and it'd be $1,500. Um, Whatever you set the price at, you could be paying your teachers 40% of the price or 30% of, of what each student pays that's in their uh, 
course. What if I, um, uh, you know, um, of course, the, uh, the, the six months might have 10 modules, so they're paying um, $150 per module at $150 each, uh, $1,500 for 10 modules. So out of the 150, you could be giving them a third of fifty dollars for each student. So you may have fifty students. So um, they may get um, uh, two and a half thousand dollars to teach once a week for six months, and uh, gives them uh, a platform, gives them uh, teaching experience, gives them something to put on their CVs and on their website. Uh, and in that way, if collecting people who've got ministries and have got giftings and are in the fivefold ministry, you're also attracting all their people on social media where they're advertising that they're teaching in this supernatural school or this discipleship school and uh, come and join. And uh, they not only get their uh, $50 from each student, but you could actually give them 10% of any of their friends that join up the site um, so they could earn more money out of that. So uh, that's like, that's a really big idea and that would be really effective. I'm sort of hoping you go and do that and then just come to me and sign me up to be one of the teachers. And uh, rather than me doing that and then uh, maybe we could work on doing that together um, that's the sort of thing that's on my blueprint and uh, and uh, that would be something I'd be very happy to work with you to uh, put in place. Uh, number six, I see you starting restaurants and cafes. I don't know if you've got a, um, a background in hospitality, but I, I saw restaurants and cafes and um, both them and multiple ones um, yet rather than just a kingdom generator of income I see these restaurants more than serving food and cafes more than serving uh, food and coffee I see them training and equipping people. Uh, so I've got a mental illness, for instance, and um, I didn't have many qualifications after a while, um, after my mental illness, so I started washing dishes. And I worked for a temping agency that allowed me to work in cafes and restaurants. So it doesn't take a lot of training, but through the, uh, through the uh, washing dishes, I got, a place with a chef that started to use me as a salad hand, which is like a kitchen hand assisting chefs. And that was my favorite job because I, when I was young, I wanted to be a chef. And so I was trained how to do specific jobs and how to assist the chefs. And that was really wonderful. Well, it was really good to do that when I had a mental illness. I didn't have to work. But I volunteered, you know, I, I chose to work a couple of days a week to supplement my income, but just stopped the boredom. There's so many people that are disenfranchised. There's so many people that need training. Um, I bought, uh, for my former church, I bought a, um, a professional uh, coffee maker. It was $800. And um, they, they were training uh, their Nepalese. they got a Nepalese church. and. They're training their Nepalese how to make coffee. And one guy trained how to make coffee on my coffee machine, then got a job in a cafe making coffee. So I sort of trained him in my coffee machine, actually trained him in to having a job in a cafe, which is very important for an immigrant to have a job so he can pay his rent and pay for his food and pay for his course. And um, so I see your cafes and restaurants making money but a secondary and even more of a compassionate reason uh, is to train up people so even in the restaurant for 
the chef to be a qualified chef, but the chef to apprentice a chef and let someone do like a three, three year apprenticeship, a four year, I think it's a three year apprenticeship in Australia, a three year apprenticeship and train up a chef and uh, then have to chef train him how to be the head chef. And then, um, and then uh, one day, um, uh, write a reference for the apprentice when he's qualified uh, for him to get another job and move on and get more experience and bring in another apprentice and be doing that with your wait staff, be doing that with your service staff, be doing that with your baristas making coffee, be doing that like being a training restaurant, a training cafe that's uh, constantly building kingdom principles into people and, uh, and, and helping people. And this is, um, once again, I can see uh, me talking about my own blueprint in your blueprint, but I can see this in you. And uh, you've got so much uh, compassion and love and agape love and mercy and kindness. You've got this fathering ability and all these giftings that are giving. Uh, it's, it's like your way, these restaurants and cafes would be your way of giving back to people and giving back to society. So that generates some income and they'll be profitable. The favour of God would be in your business. Um, God's favour would be on you. And uh, so you'd be successful and, um, and uh, that generates some good income. But you'd be really sowing into the kingdom and training uh, people who, uh, who can really be blessed by you. I don't see you necessarily having to be in those cafes or restaurants. I just see you uh, setting them up, running them and overseeing them. Um, okay, so uh, number seven, I see you learning to lead groups of people, train groups around subjects, mentor and equip and monetize. So this is like, um, your online uh, course in number five, there's people that are coming to your training course. You can break them out into Facebook groups and, uh, and webinar groups and uh, be teaching the students, teaching the groups around certain subjects, uh, mentoring, equipping them, and helping them monetize their gifts and monetize their abilities. So it could be separate to your training course. It sounds like the same thing. One's an online school, one's like groups, like Facebook groups and um, running groups of people. And uh, that could feed into it. People could come from your groups, feed into your online course. People from your online course could feed into these groups. But I can see you. Uh, doing that, I can see you really having um, this uh, gift of leadership that can uh, rise up within you and uh, teach and equip and help people monetize uh, their gifts and their abilities and uh, teach them how to enter into kingdom sort of lifestyle and kingdom sort of earning and kingdom sort of finances. Um, number eight, I see a, see a prophetic apostolic anointing over you in business and in the spiritual dimension. Um, the world really doesn't need any more religion. It needs Christians out there in the marketplace. So everything that you teach in your omnibus books and your collective books. I can see you teaching in the church and uh, ministering those gifts and abilities uh, in the church and those subjects in the church. But uh, I can see like this prophetic gifting rising up in you, this sharp spirit-led teaching, uh, teaching where you're getting revelation on the word of God as you're speaking. Uh, the, the Lord through his Holy Spirit is revealing deeper and deeper meanings as you teach and um, having this really sharp prophetic anointing 
and um, also this fathering, overseeing, covering sort of apostle over business, over businesses that you run, over the training schools, but also over um, churches too, that you could be like a bishop or an apostle uh, over groups of churches. Um, I sense that um, uh, you'd be able to unpack that yourself and uh, see what that looks like. Now, there could, probably could be 20 or 30 things uh, that I could speak about. These are the things I saw initially uh, in you. And uh, I try not to say too many things to overwhelm a person. Um, I, uh, I hope uh, that this has been helpful. Now, <laughs> pardon me, um, all of your giftings, if I add leadership uh, to that um, group of initial giftings that I saw, um, uh, all of your, um, all of the eight things would have multiples of these natural talents and abilities and giftings flowing through them. So um, I, I covered a few of them. Number four, modeling how to serve others and teaching how to serve faithfully would have your teacher, your servant of all, and your fathering giftings moving through that. And uh, each of them, if you want to marry up the giftings that I spoke about in the beginning and match them up with uh, these uh, life purposes and life callings, uh, then you'll see that uh, you've got a good blend and a good mixture of your giftings over everything that you would be doing with your life. So I really welcome your feedback. I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, you don't have to pay for me. I'd love to have like a Facebook a video call with you or a Zoom call and we could have a good talk about this. Um, everything that I covered, everything that I wrote down, will be actually in the description tag of the blueprint and uh, so you can press on the button see more under my name and have my notes written there so you can have a look at them and when you come back to it in a week or two you can just look at the notes and say yeah that's what it was um so i really encourage you to share this with your friends or, uh, i encourage you to pray about this, uh, see if I'm wrong about anything, and I can be, and I have been in the past. Um, feel free to talk to me anytime and converse over this. And once again, I say I'm not in this business uh, to make money and generate money. It was though people can uh, donate money and uh, give me and bless me with money. I haven't got any problem with money, but I do this because I've got a heart like you, um, I've got all these um, giftings that are in you that are in me too. And it's like I'm speaking to myself. And uh, so uh, I pray that you're encouraged uh, and uh, bless you, Callum. And uh, if you're watching this and you saw this prophetic blueprint, uh, you could see that it's different to a normal prophecy, a normal spiritual reading. And um, whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian, uh, I'd encourage you to order this service for yourself and tell me if you're not a Christian so I wouldn't use uh, Christian terms. Um, and I really encourage you, everyone's got a destiny. Everyone's got a purpose. And it'd be nice to be able to see what you're planned here for. And uh, uh, God bless you, Callum, and God bless all the listeners. Amen.